Aloha Kamaka Brown with Sandwich Island Social Network. Mahalo for being with us. Um, we are just so um, blessed uh, to have a, a great friend of ours uh, join us this morning for just kind of hanging out. And uh, this right here is uh, Peter Navy. Tuya Sosopo. How's it, brother? Good, good. Kamaka, <laughs> good to see you, brother. How are you? I'm doing really good, and you know, I'm so jelly, bro. I am major jelly, okay, because right now you are at Hilton Hawaiian Village on the island of Oahu in Waikiki, okay, and last night you and I on the phone, I mean, was cruel and unusual punishment. You said you was going, you said you was going Leonard's for get some malasadas, bro. You know, it brought tears to my eyes, bro. You know, you... I, tell you. I had to do it, cuz. <laughs> I had to do it. There was no way I was going to let you off the hook. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, um, a lot of our friends are, are, are tuning in um, uh, this morning and uh, sharing it, uh, this moment with us. And uh, first of all, mahalo for taking time out. I know you have a busy schedule. Uh, you are shooting with Magnum PI, uh, and they keep, you, they keep you busy over there. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about um, about what's going on with you right now. But just for now, I'll like take you all the way back to Phineas Banning High School. Oh my goodness! You get you get whiplash <laughs> out there in San Pedro High School. Uh, you was playing football. You was playing football even right in high school, right? Yes. Yeah, so yes, Kamaka. Thank you again. First, thank you. I'm honored. Really privileged to be on your your podcast. And uh, yes, it all started. I'm a San Pedro boy. Went to San Pedro High School. And um, from there, uh, I played football there, went on and uh, to college and, and so on and so forth. But definitely played some football. You know, the name is a football family name. So very proud of that. I think anyone who has that bloodline is going to play football, even if you're a girl. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. It runs in the DNA already, man. You know. Yes. Effective. Yes. So coming out, coming out of high school, um, you ended up at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and then um, then you had some some invites for the NFL uh, Combine workout. So you did that for a couple of years, yeah. Went to the NFL Combines at that time. They had uh, two on the East Coast, West Coast. Now it's it's elaborate invitation only, but back then it went there and. and uh, Tried out, did my best uh, for two years. Had an agent at the time, came out of Cal Poly. Um, things didn't work out. Uh, but um, I was very grounded, Kamaka, because of my family. My big brothers, Manu Chio Sosopo, Terry Tautolo, John Tautolo, these guys, Frank Manmula, you know, these guys, my Uncle Baba Pisa, they gave me that guidance and direction and really grounded me. Grounded all of us little cousins that Sweet. were little cousins and brothers that were younger than them because they already made it to the league. Yeah. So we were well, I, I, I got to thank God for them because we were really grounded. And you know, you and I, Kamaka, we come from a culture and the people love humility. So the the opportunity was there. Um, it just wasn't my, my calling. So. Uh, so let's talk about the Polynesian uh, Football Hall of Fame because you have family that um, have been inducted into the Polynesian Hall of Fame. I, um, Baba Pisa, your uncle, you get some cousins, Manu and um, uh, Marcus, right, that are there as well. Uh, and um, the, the beautiful thing about it is this Hall of Fame honors the greatest players, the coaches, the contributors of Polynesian descent in the sport of American football. And um, that, that. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Kamaka. Man, but um, I just uh, uh, text uh, Jesse. I'm about to come on, and uh, I don't know if he's, he caught it, but um, Jesse Sapolo, who definitely was the leader and the, the ground of uh, the groundbreaking uh, great pro football, Polynesian Pro Football Hall of Fame. So the, the family that's in there, oh, it, it's really so, so touching and moving. For anybody who's a, who's a family, GL Sopo. So, yes, very proud of them. I'm very proud of the overall to see all the Polynesians in that Hall of Fame. It, it's as big 
especially for us Polys, that's bigger than the NFL Hall of Fame itself. Yeah, because it's really close to home. It's it's uh, right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and of course, so the class of 2021 is El Nonga and uh, Nico. Nonga um, have been inducted into the class of 21 for the Polynesian Hall of Fame. And then also Charlie Wiedemeyer uh, there as well. So that's a I, I, I got to give uh, Nico and Al, I'm close with those guys. Give them congratulations and love. They've well deserved, even Pete. Pete Nonga, these guys, man, they really, they really represented, you know, Polynesians represented Samoa um, in their, in their time uh, playing, but well deserved, you know as well, Kamaka. Nico, Nico was damn he man, you know, superhero <laughs> here at UH, and Al as well in his own right. You know, Pete, Pete played there too, but they they made a good mark in the league. I'm very proud of the Nolans. Yeah, well, you know, we have friends that have have uh, are watching us right now. Uh, in fact. Um, there's Valerie saying aloha to us. And, um, you know, if you're watching this right now and you want to ask a question of, of Peter over here um, or you want to uh, give a gee hoo, you can do that too. No worries. You can, you can, <laughs> you can do that. No worries. Right. And, uh, you know, um, we have, uh, and there's also, let me see, there's also um, uh, Flying Hawaiian is here from Denver, Colorado. She's uh, checking in and uh, watching this as well. So uh, if, uh, if you're nice. watching this on Facebook Live, um, you want to post, uh, say a hello to uh, to Peter, and um, if you have some questions about Peter, um, you know about his um, his life, his career, family, please be free to do that. And I'm monitoring that as we as we go along here. So now, you know, um, I looked up in um, in uh, you know in some some background here online. I was just saying, what are the, some of the things? And it says that you know. You're also known uh, for your roles as E. Honda in Universal Pictures, Street Fighter, Manuma Mana in Paramount Pictures, The Necessary, uh, Necessary Roughness. You are in Fast, Fast and Furious, Scorpion King, NCSI, The Mayans, Motorcycle Club, MC, uh, which, by the way, I loved. I binged that bug. I never sleep for two days. I watched the whole thing. <laughs> so, so your acting career, Peter... Some 30 years you've been doing. How did this thing happen? You've been at it for 30 years. How did that happen? I, I, to be honest, Kamaka, almost purely accidental. Purely accidental. Hey, and there's, a, there's a Chihu right now for you <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> purely, purely accidental. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, purely accidental in, in a way where um, an opportunity came Necessary Roughness, I think everybody, that's a classic football uh, film comedy. And uh, that came out. And uh, my Uncle Bob, Apisa, is a, a Hollywood stuntman, a legend, retired Hollywood stuntman who's done many works. And uh, Bob out of Hawaii represents. Uh, you know as well, he played for Michigan State, went to the Green Bay Packers. But it's interesting, Necessary Roughness, Kamaka, I, I wasn't, I didn't have an agent yet. So I went down, Uncle Bob told me to go. At that time, you can crash. Could they call you crash at audition? Crash your call. Basically, you come in there like, hey, can I try? They let you try. Nowadays, since 9-11, no go. Nothing's getting through those gates. So at that period in time, I went in. Man, come on, it was beautiful. When I went in, I came to the lobby the, what I got from Bob, he said to play football in a football movie. So, you know, you and I, we grew up in football movies. I'm assuming another football player. No big deal. Let me go down and get a little money. I'm not thinking an acting role, Kamaka. So I go there and I go, hey, when I walked in the lobby, Kamaka, you're going to love it. There are 40 men with Aloha shirts, right? <laughs> 40 men with the law shirts, every color, cuz red, black, red, pink, every nationality with the law shirts. I'm already laughing, you know. I come in there and I got a t shirt, some jean shorts, and some, you know, Timberland boots. So I come in there, hi, you know, this and that. The, the, the girl goes, Yeah, my agent just called me. I have no agent. My agent just called me. The secretary goes, Hold on. She looks on the paper. I don't see your name here. She goes, wait one minute. They're in session now. 
So the casting director assistant went in the room. I don't even remember. I'm new. I don't know what's going on. She goes in the room. The director opened the door, peeked out. He closed the door. The assistant came back out. She goes, Peter, can you can you um stay? They want to see you. Long story short, I had no appointment, had no business in that room. <laughs> all those, all those 40 men went. I probably went two hours after every guy. See ya. I was the last guy. <laughs> I go in there. I go in there, Kamaka. I read. And you know what I said when I came out of that read? I'm nervous. <laughs> when I went in, Kamaka, when you go on the test screen, it's me like you right there. You're sitting there, Kamaka. Can you imagine 20 people on this side of the camera looking at you? <laughs> and no, remember, remember, Kamaka, they just got through sitting with 40 guys. <laughs> so here's the here's the look when I got there, like. <laughs> Right, Kamaka? And I, I, I'm like, hello, everybody. They're like, but, you know, I didn't, you know, I, after I thought, you know, they've been sitting there a long time. So when I read Kamaka, no real response. The director was going, very good. And I'm like, not the, the other 20 people anything in that, you know. <laughs> so anyway, Kamaka, I leave. I leave, I promise you, Kamaka. Remember, I just started, but I go, that was a great experience because I sucked. <laughs> I sucked. <laughs> And, and anyway, Kamaka, when I got, true story, when I was walking down the foyer to the elevator, somebody ran up the, the room, jogging down, the director, jogging after me, Kamaka, Peter, Peter, that was good. And I'm like, really? You know? <laughs> anyway, he, he had me come back. That was a Friday. Had me come back Monday, Tuesday, another two test screens. Remember, I'm new. To me, that was all good. But I'm smart and intelligent enough, Kamaka, like, you didn't say I got the job. We didn't sign no contract. So <laughs> even all these meetings, yeah, they're cool, but am I going to work? Right. Sure enough, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, see me again. Wednesday, they called that and booked the job. Sweet. Well, you know what? We got so many of our friends uh, that are just enjoying this. Um, here's brother Marty Burns. He's going, aloha, chee-hoo. You can see that over there. <laughs> right on, Marty. <laughs> Um, we get uh, we get better naps. What's up, brothers? Right there. <laughs> nappy, nappy. If I look like you and sing like you, my career would be off the top. <laughs> um, we get our um, we get brother Don and some of the Ohana from Reason Cinco, which is their their uh, my boys, my boys. That's Love good peeps, Don. good peeps. They say, let's go, let's go. Um, and uh, so many, so many um, uh, wonderful comments coming in. Here's Flying Hawaiian. She goes, talking to you, Peter. She goes, you rock. They're all paving the way for all Polynesians, man. He goes, you rock, man. You know? Thank that, you. That is beautiful. Thank you. Uh, his, Thank you. <laughs> his naps. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nappy's favorite word. Yeah, yeah. He goes, getting the nappy, props. Bro. Nappy, Maka, on Nappy, Nappy Ben in mainland. 40 years, he still don't speak English. <laughs> he speak, he speak pigeon. He speak pigeon. <laughs> oh, his brother Larry Tago. He said, What's up, Uso? <laughs> What's up, Larry? <laughs> All right. Um, here's Bob Naluai. He goes, Aloha, I'm a Wilmington boy. I went to Banning. Look. <laughs> What's up, up, Bob? That's from the Naluai Ohana over there, man. You know? Good, um, good local boy. That's and, right, Bob. Uh, this is one uh, Pula Leah. She's from uh, Kohala. She's talking to Naps and uh, saying, saying nice. Aloha over there. All the gang, all the gang have come out to um, to check you out here, Peter. And um, beautiful his story. So yeah. So uh, you know, if you're if uh, you're listening and whatever, some you got some questions for Peter. You know about his career and stuff and about things going on. Um, go ahead and post them, and we'd be more than happy to address them. Um, family friendly, folks. Family friendly. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> it's a so, family show, folks. So, Peter, I said, you know, you've been at it for like 30 years. I mean, Fast and Furious, Scorpion King, um, all of that. Um, as a poly in the industry, now we're talking about the movie industry, you know, uh, and tell us a little bit about your feelings about that. I mean, we've got some dear friends like Cesa Gray. You know, um, love her. Um, you know, we have um, a number of polys that are in the industry, but not very well represented uh, as a whole. Talk to us about that. What are your feelings? 
It's a great question, Kamaka. And yes, I uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, kind words. I, I've been in a long time, Kamaka. And you're right. People like Cesar Gray, Sidney Liu Fao, Olo, Alaidima, these guys are old school when I came in. Jason Momoa came in around the same time. Thank God for The Rock and Jason really set things, separated the polys from the rest of the mainstream superstars. So I got to thank, much love to Rock and, and Jason. And uh, I, I like to consider myself in my own mind as number three. I'm the third, you know what I mean? I'm the third guy that's, that's trying to lead this pack, but not lead as a leader, but lead as somebody to pull all the other talent to expose the Polynesian talent and love. The thing about it that gets me, I'm here shooting Magnum and it's good because it can be recurring to, to an, I'm trying to get elevated to a, a series regular. And, and um, it shows throughout my career, Kamaka, how many times you've seen, you and I, everybody listening, you've seen some type of Polynesian storyline, some type of show here in Hawaii, some type of show in Australia, New Zealand, in, in those tropical lands and, 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 and representing our people, the Polynesian people. But yet you don't got Polynesians represented in those films, in those TV shows. You basically got the pretty white guy, pretty white girl representing for us and you're calling them, yeah, that's them. That's the Hawaiians here. You know what I mean? That's the Samoans, that's the Tongans. It's not right. It's one thing, it's one thing to be pr a proud actor, but also I represent the people. I represent Polynesia. And the thing about it, we are underrepresented. We are uh, misrepresented. We're disrespected by this um, industry of entertainment when we got the, the greatest talent in the world. And so in saying that, with all my love and respect as an artist, um, it's Hollywood's lost. It, it's uh, it's mu music, musicians, you know, people like Nappy, those record labels, those big record companies, you know, Henry Capono, my good friend, these guys, that talent, come on, brother, you can't touch these guys. You know what I mean? Nappy in his own right, he can sing with the rest of them. But we don't get the opportunity because, again, we're overlooked. You know, we're overlooked by this entertainment industry. And for that, I hope and pray that it changes. I will continue to grind and always represent, you know, Polynesians at my best. Yeah. So Pulalea has a question, and I think you've stated just a little bit, but what is your opinion of the stereotypes of Polynesians in Hollywood? Thanks, Pulinia. Thank you. Beautiful question, sweetheart. Um, I, I don't. I don't care for it. The the stereotypical uh, attitude in Hollywood toward Polynesians, it's to me, because number one, remember, we're thinking, go back to Hawaii Five-0. Even Hawaii Five-0 at that point in time, you still had your Al Harrington's. You still had Polynesians. You had Coco, the guy that played the role Coco. You had those guys... Remember, they were front and center as the co-stars. That's back in what, the 60s, 70s. Here, 21st century, you don't got one poly show. You don't got one Polynesian on a show. Yes, thank God. The Rock do whatever he want. Jason Momoa do whatever they want. And they represent us proud. Yes, very good. But come on. Mainstream television, mainstream movies, mainstream music, where are our people? Nowhere to be found. We're overlooked. We're overlooked, which is disrespectful. Yeah. And, you know, um, Polynesia, Hawaii, all through Polynesia has provided such a rich, rich mine of, of uh, um, uh, you know, background for Hollywood. Uh, yet uh, the people that inhabit these areas that uh, Hollywood has been just reaping billions of dollars over the years. Uh, you know, uh, what is wrong with this picture? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Great question, Pua Lalia. Uh, and Great I love question. it because Pua just saying, preach, brother. <laughs> no, I got I to gotta go back because um, uh, one brother over here who I love dearly, man, he has a, a good comment over here. And this goes back to um, playing football. This is um, um, uh, uh, Makaena, DC Makaena. He goes, I played 
parking lot football with Bob and my beloved classmate Rudy Apisa and the rest of the Halava housing crew. <laughs> Halava. You were on the Halava State team, huh? <laughs> and then, At least it wasn't a Halava State prison, cuz. That's yeah, a yeah. great question, Dad. And then he goes, Halava rules. He goes, Halava rules. Unlimited forward passes, no substitution, unless your mother is calling you for come home to cook rice. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful DC. <laughs> Mahalo for that. Mahalo for oh, that. That makai, story. that makaena is too much. I love it. Great I love story. It. Oh, and now we get um, another brother who's out in San Diego. Uh, he's uh, he's from the Wiedemeyer family. His uncle Herman uh, was on Hawaii, the original Hawaii Five Vol. Uh, Herman Wiedemeyer. Uh, yeah. And of course, Herman also came from a football. Um, you know, he family. was. Yes, he was banging man. Um, yes, man. Um, he what was his nickname? I forgot. He had his nickname. Uh, he could. He was like amazing. Uh, he, um, he was a beast. He was a beast. A beast. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's his uncle. Um, you know, and he's nice. watch, he's watching today. Um, Kevin. Kevin from uh, San Jose. Um, Pull Alia says we're always portrayed as a sidekick or the comic relief. Yeah, you know that's kind of like how how they cast us, right? Um, uh, and, uh, so, so poor poor Lilia, for your this role that I got here, I won't spoil it. You got to watch it. Um, very deep, very. Um, so Amy, you guys know Amy that plays on the show. She plays Sewila. so it's me and her. I play her cousin, and um, but the dialogue and the scenes and the storyline, very strong. I plan. I plan to get on this show permanently. So Sweet. just pray for me. Um, um, write 5 0 or uh, Magnum, write him now. <laughs> Say, <laughs> you need our brother. Because to be honest with you, poor Lilia, man, I talked to my family and friends here. Nobody watched that show here. No. Nope. In Hawaii. Nope. Nobody. Yeah. So, and they, and again, that goes to what I was talking about the misrepresentation. Remember, we had a great, we had a great run. Like Wiedemeyer was saying, his uncle Herman was on, on you know, a, a lot of episodes for Hawaii Five O. Remember, you can watch an old Hawaii Five O and still see the Hawaiian, still see the Samoan on that show. And even now, even when I seen that as a kid, I was like, man, those are our people. Al Harrington, those are our people. Me and Al very close. He 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 cried, he cried one time when I told him. Why, since that time to now, and I was I was pointing to Al, how come you haven't you you were good enough to get your own show? How come you didn't again? Because of the politics in Hollywood, and because of Al, who was a great actor, great performer. Everybody knows Al Harrington. It just didn't go. My thing was, I told Al straight, I don't think you pushed hard enough. Hmm. I don't think you pushed hard enough. Yeah, me guys. You know, I come from this generation. I've seen all the, I've seen all the guys past, and I've seen the failures and things. The Rock, Jason Momoa, same thing. They went and took it by storm. They took it by storm, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. So anytime you see The Rock or Jason, that represents us, the people. So we got to be thankful. But we also, we got a long road to go. I know all the other guys everybody behind me that are just trying to scratch the surface of this business. Cesar Gray, wonderful talent. My sister, man, she's beautiful. She and is, and yeah. why don't you have a show yet? I don't know. Yeah. So, okay, let me just go back uh, to what you just said a little while ago, and I want to tag on that, uh, Peter. And that is, and um, um, Brother Naps right now has said, we'll be praying for you. Um, and so, uh, you, you just better. you just said a little while ago, you know, um, all of our friends that are our Ohana that's um, watching this today, you heard it first now. Um, Brother Pete over here is reaching out in Magnum PI to have more a, a reoccurring role over there. And that will be such a beautiful thing. And anything that we can do on our side to write, to send emails, to whatever connection we can online to Magnum PI and say, hey, you know. Uh, we want to have um, Peter on it, um, you know, we'll, and it would be more of an incentive for us to watch it, um, praying for it. Let's make that happen. We heard it first right over here, 
right? On the Samaj Island Social Network. Amen. Amen. Okay? Right here. Right here. <laughs> we need to make that happen. Here's um here's a friend of mine, um uh, Nate Jones. He says, How's it, Peter? I know you didn't have to go through the background ranks, but seeing if you had any advice for people doing background work who eventually want to eventually become principal actor or hoping to get upgraded on the set. Interesting question. You know, beautiful question, Nate. Thank you for your question. Brother Nate, listen to me. Everyone is not an artist, brother, but let me tell you something. If you're doing background, you obviously feel it. The thing what I tell young guys all the time, preparedness is power. Preparedness is power. And I tell people even now, friends and family want to put their kids in. I go, man, for you, Nate, you're an adult. If you're going to do, if you're going to do it, do it all the way. Get in all the way. All caution to the wind, jump in. And that's going to require a lot of work. That's going to require, I love this way, what I tell people. That's going to require you, Nate, going out on 100 auditions and getting one. And that's good. That's success. That's the reality of this business. So if you're not willing to sacrifice like that, Nate, don't do it, cuz. Don't do it. But if you're in background work now, there's obviously something in your heart of hearts that you want to break, just like you said, to become a principal actor. Keep going, brother. I have all love and respect for the arts, but I do also respect the real talent that are principal workers. You got to really, you got to really grind. So more power to you, brother. You can do it. You know what I've done? Nothing. If I look like Nappy, I would have been further on <laughs> in my career. But I don't. Anyway. <laughs> so, so, um, you know, some of the notice uh, you might, uh, for uh, our friends, our, our Ohana that's watching right now, there may be some lags, um, and that's simply because of the um, the internet service provider, the network. Uh, we have no control over that, but hang in there. It might freeze up for a little while, but um, it'll continue. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be here for a little while longer. Um, and, and thank you so much for your time, Peter. Uh, Brad, this is, this is, folks are really, really enjoying you, um, you know, and here's a, a uh, flying Hawaiian from uh, Colorado. She goes, praying for you. You get your prayers over here. Um, Thank so you. Nappy says, we back you, brah. You know, um, all you, of this Nap. coming across. Nappy. And um, Paul Elias says, uh, Naps is quite a dashing gentleman. You know, Nappy get his own fan club. You know, we got to get Nappy on here too, bro. I'm going to get him on here. I, I, I didn't, I told you don't let him come on. Because <laughs> I told you don't let Nappy in, even though you told me Nappy called. <laughs> Don't let him on the don't let him on the streamline. <laughs> Cause once he busts out the guitar and he starts singing, it's all over. It's all over. Oh, Cause I I, I want to leave the screen now. And turn it on Nappy. <laughs> oh oh yeah. Marty Burns says I wish I looked like Nappy too. <laughs> Marty, I feel your pain, Marty. I feel your pain. <laughs> oh, oh good. So. Uh, Let's talk a little bit um, about um, some, you know, one of our friends that we, we're we're uh, so happy to have as part of our Ohana over here, and um, you know that is Don Kaalkai. Uh, now Don, Don is a Nanakuli boy. My goodness, um, uh, Baga Baga is solid, solid. So you've have, um, you know, you've had some um, uh, uh, interaction with uh, Reason Cinco, which um, you know, which is our. Um, well, you know, one of our sponsors over here. Uh, tell us a little bit about your um, your um, uh, connection. I'm wearing one of the, the t-shirts and the hat wear from Reason. Um, you look good. Great you stuff good. here, brother. You know, um, and you look um, good. I wanted to I wanted so, to sh share a couple of things over here about um, about Reason over here. You know, um, let's let's see if I can get it, um, get it to work here by Jove. I think I will. It's coming out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so reason has, um, reason has a number of great, um, you know, um, things that they, they do have reason, um, eyewear.com is one of their, um, their, their sites. Uh, let me see if I can, um, I can work the, um, the, the magic. There we go. All right. Uh, reason scene co they have eyewear, they got hoodies, they got shirts, Headgear, swimwear, activewear, and we—if you're you're watching us right now, we'd like you to make a note of ReasonSinco.com. Um, one of the managing partners is a good brother of ours, Don Kaalkai, 
uh, like I said, he's a Nana boy, just like uh, just like the um, Mr. Napoleon Nappy. And um, uh, I, like I said, I'm wearing the hat. But that's that's their their logo for a reason. They got T-shirts and great stuff, and uh, just just neat stuff, man. Right? Yeah. Nappy, all those Nana thugs. <laughs> Nappy, Kornishki, you know, Salva. I'll, I'll be with Kornishki all day tomorrow. But oh, sweet. You want to give give Konishki love? Uh, um, Konishki is doing some business over in his mansion in Nanakuli. Nice. I always go, hey, hey, why did you put it here? You could have went diamond head. <laughs> you could have went diamond head. You could have anywhere anywhere in Hawaii. You know what you told me? I'm a Nana boy. I'm a Nana boy. <laughs> <laughs> he said, true story. I go, Sole, really? <laughs> you go you go down that main street in Nanakuli. You see broken house, you see broke house, broke house, mansion, right? Mansion, Kamaka. <laughs> and I go, I go, Sole, you could put him on top of Diamond Head anywhere you want. He goes, I could, but man, I'm a true Nana boy. So, Don Kaokai, <laughs> let me share a reason. So, Don, I love Don. Don is also my business manager nice. for my, my career. And then he also, as well, he's an executive for Reason Gear, Reason Cinco, Reason Eyewear. Reason is the name of the company. They got all of it. They're, they're just as good as, you know, any of the T-shirt or, or glasses. Um, you know, you know, Kamaka, I got to say this, but with all humility, I, I, I myself, Reason is beautiful. Uh, Don's there, my nephew Chad, Don's son. Um, they really do a lot of hard work. Here in Hawaii, you got Kaipo. He does a lot of hard work for Hawaii. Stephanie Kankai, Don's sister, they all, you know what I love? A small group of nobodies like us, but putting together a vision, a vision, and making sure it works. Fighting, fighting. And, uh, you know, that's that poly power. That's that power love. You know what I mean? So reason is beautiful. You know, Kamaga, I've been in this business a long time. I've done a lot of things. I did, I did the best soap opera, uh, the soap operas, um, Young and the Restless. I did 10 episodes on Young and the Restless. Me, ugly me, man, did, did episodes <laughs> on Young and the Restless. Necessary Roughness is classic legend movie. Street Fighter, the video game turned, turned movie. I did the Mayans MC just recently. I'm at Magnum now, PI. So I, I'm humbled. I'm thankful. But in this business, you know, you think you've made it. <laughs> I didn't make it until reason made me, allowed me to design my own pair of sunglasses. And the reason I did design my own pair of sunglasses is because us big guys, we never get kind of fit, right? So that was my old thing. Don says, well, what do you think? I started, I used to be an Oakley man. I was a long time Oakley man, but still it had that little snug, you know, <laughs> you know, when our big boys wear glasses and the arms go out like this, come on, guys. Right? It ain't right. It ain't right. So reason, reason I designed, helped design and develop my own sunglasses. <laughs> They're called the initials PNT, okay? Silverback PNT, guys. Silverback PNT. I don't mean to show off. I don't mean to look like Stevie Wonder on here. But let me tell you guys, reason as the stuff. If you're a big guy like me, and this is all you guys, all you polys. Man, this is your glasses. This pair right here I'm wearing is the the turtle shell. The turtle shell with the dark lens. And, and you guys know, I was ugly till I put these glasses on. <laughs> so you want that same effect? It works. It works on everybody. So all you big guys, to Reason Cinco, much love, much respect. Let's go, guys. Man, Reason all the way. I love it. I love them, guys. Oh, that is beautiful, brother. <laughs> I love that. First ten, the the first ten callers. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, oh man, that is that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Um, there's there's um there's uh you know you've really made it, man. When you get your own sunglasses, man. You know, it's, a, it's what it's all about. Come on, brother. So, hey, if my career was over. If my career was over today, I got sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Um, well, we have lots of our friends are 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 um, 
uh, checking in with us right now. Oh, there's Audrey. Hello. Uh, Audrey is uh, sending her her uh, greetings. Good to see you, Peter. Happy New Year, she says. There's Audrey right there. Um, I love Audrey. Audrey, I love you. Indeed. I and, love uh, you, Audrey. Aloha. Um, here's Marty saying, I've been looking for a pair of sunglasses to fit my big head. <laughs> I'm going to order today. Marty. Number one, we both look the same. It's perfect for you, cuz. <laughs> it's perfect, Marty. So go to the website, Reason Cinco, and you'll see them. They're the Silverback PNT, PNT for my name, Peter Navy Chiasa Sopo, the signature. You'll see the storyline. It's beautiful. Nice. Get it, Marty? All you big guys, there's not one big guy in the world that shouldn't have silverbacks. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, man. Um, gosh, we're having a good time over here. We get, um, oh, this is my cousin all the way from Minnesota. He's saying, what's up? Sending his shaka from Minnesota. Burr. <laughs> all right. Pull Minnesota now. He says, pull a list. It looks dope. <laughs> uh, it's all makeup. It's all makeup. Pull uh, it's all makeup. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, I know that you're a man of faith. Um, Peter, you, you know, you are aside from, um, all of the accolades and all of the things that, 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 that you've enjoyed, something that has been a, an anchor for you is, has been your faith. And I know that just, um, just a little over a year ago, uh, you and your family experienced something that no parent ever wants to go through. And uh, if you don't mind, can you share with us um, that? Because we're all Ohana over here. Uh, and um, can you share what happened? So a year ago, uh, uh, I, I lost my, my wife and I, my, my kids. We have six kids. We lost one, our youngest daughter, 18-year-old Nisili. And Nisili, unfortunately, uh, got into some drug problems. And the specific drug I'm talking about is fentanyl. Fentanyl from the opiates family. A lot of you understand what I'm saying. That that drug, um, it, it's killing. It's killing, still killing young people now. So Nisili, unfortunately, when she messed around, we, we thought maybe it was a, a little pot smoking problem because she'd come home. We kind of see, we could kind of see it. But Nisili knew she was in trouble, went to my wife and said, Mom, uh, I've been doing this. I've been messing around with fentanyl. We had no idea. She, you know, you know, she masked it and covered up pretty good. So immediately my wife, and all credit to my wife, got her into rehab, got her into the classes, the programs. By then, at that point in time, she had only been using maybe a year, a year and a half at most. But it was too strong. The addiction... People that know about addictions or people that have been addictions understand that it's it's a tough fight. So Nisili um, went to the programs, went to rehab. Then that was when she was 16 and a half, 17. 18, you got to transition now from your minor units to adults. And so Nisili was in a good place at the time. She was so afraid to leave and then get transitioned because you know a lot of these programs, you got to wait to get accepted and so on and so forth. So we had a gap. Nisili got out of her, her, um, her rehab when she turned 18 in November last year. In that short time, Nisili obviously got a hold of some or went to a friend and, and they did it January 14th last year. So I'm sorry. So that's November, November 2019. Nisili got out. And then January 14th last year, today, this, this month is a one year anniversary, but January 14, 2020, um, she died in her sleep, accidental overdose. And because she was so already rehabbing, going clean, she had obviously messed around and took one, whatever, a pill, got a pill from somebody and did it and, and uh, um, passed away in her sleep. And, and I tell you, Kamaka, um, I love you uh, explaining my faith in God. Um, nobody, if there's parents out there who've gone through something like this, all of us who are parents, 
it's just something not right to bury your own child before you, you know? And when he see me passed, it was tough, brother. It was tough. And so, but I got to thank God that without him, we'd be down, bro. Without him, I would have been broken. I was, I struggled. I struggled a long time. So my wife, when she passed, um, we thought of all the young people uh, who are in trouble and addicted fentanyl. This is, this is worldwide. Fentanyl, the opiates epidemic, it's worldwide. So my wife asked me, when the city passed, we gotta we gotta fight this battle. We gotta fight this battle. So I'm sorry. No, bro. You're 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 reaching out to all of us. I'm getting white maka over here just listening to you, brother. Um so yeah. so so Kamaka, my wife promised me, she goes, promise me, husband, promise me you'll create a foundation to help these young kids everywhere to help people everywhere who are battling this opiates epidemic, fentanyl epidemic, and uh, for our daughter, and I promised her I would do it. Then we created Nisimi's Fight Foundation. And when we did that, that's now a up and running. We just launched it uh, last week. We just launched the the uh, um, website, the, uh, the um, foundation, and many people can go there and get some information. And you can also hear more in-depth storyline. But you can see a, a, a family in pain. You can you can hear their pain, but then you can also hear their love. You know, we still got five kids. Still got five kids that depend on us. We got four grandkids that depend on us. So we now, we are Nisili's legacy. We are Nisili's life. We are Nisili's fight. So you see the the website posted, please, guys, when you have a minute, um, go on the, the website and the foundation and take a look. And especially you families who may be going through this battle and this trouble, especially with your own kids, please let us know. We, we want to help as best we can. We have a, a big rally coming up on the 13th. Um, and I, I'll, I'll tap in with you then, too, as well, Kamaka because uh, um, that's being uh, reported by the news, covered by the news in Arizona. So anyway, but a uh, to everybody. And again, if that's you out there, man, God, God be with you. God loves you and he cares about the struggle and the battles we all go through. Whew. I, um, I get chicken skin over here, brother. Um, here's a, uh... Here's my cousin in Minnesota saying addiction is hard and reaching out to extended family is good. I'm so very glad you're doing this with, um, with the foundation. Um, and, uh, Thank you, Harrison. Thank there's you, a flying Hawaiian saying, um, you know, prayer for continued healing. There's, there's, we certainly, we certainly need all those prayers, um, as well. Um, you have also the global family prayer chain. Would you share with us some um, about that too, please? Um, yeah, yeah. The global family prayer chain. Uh, um, we all know we're we're in a a, a real life uh, dark time, uh, you know, with the global pandemic, uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. And so um, after my daughter passed, and then that came March. Um, March was around the big time where everything changed, the world changed. Um, so my wife kept asking me, I think you should say something because a lot of people know you. I think you should go on uh, social media and encourage everybody to pray because I am a praying man. I am a man of faith and my wife thought it would be something. I honestly, Kamaka, I was going, not another prayer chain, you know, not another guy, you know, uh, uh, saying, you know, something about, you know, that's just repetitious and almost boring, you know? So with all respect to everybody who's doing them, I'm, I'm not knocking you. So my wife begged me three weeks cause I didn't do nothing. And, but man, now I see my daughter asking me, daddy, you gonna do it? And I said, you know, like we do, come on, go, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't do it. And then I remember praying and thinking, man, it's one shot, come on, go. you know what I mean? Let me go on. A lot of people know me. Let somebody see me. And I, all I was going to do, Kamaka, 
encouraged. And everybody understands right now, everybody, we all need to pray. We all need to pray for this situation. You know, this is the new norm, guys. And, and that COVID-19, there ain't no end in sight right now. No, we're close. So I went on one shot, all of April 3rd, Kamaka. April 3rd, I went one time, one time. I was on there about 30, 40 minutes. When I hung up, my phone was going off, personal phone. My 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 uh, inbox messages on, on uh, Facebook blowing up. Everyone who knew me, everybody who's seen it was going, bro, you need to do this every day. You need to do this every day. Bro, we need this. Pete, I was moved. I was touched. People I did not know says, man, Peter, I don't go to church. I don't have a church. But, man, I want to be a part of your church. I'm thinking that I'm, I'm not no church. I'm not no church. Anyway, long story short, Kamaka, it's been going solid since April 3rd. So all of you, it's on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Saturday, 6 p.m. I'll be doing it this week because I'm filming. I'll be doing it Sunday. But if you look at me on Facebook, Kamaka Season 2, I always post my reminder about the prayer chain. So the prayer chain, Kamaka, it's for it's for us all. There's no denomination. There's no special group. There's just humans, man. There's just sinners, sinners like me, just sinners, just trying to find the Lord, trying to see the lights. Oh, man, Marty. Marty, I, I know South Foy. I know South Foy. Yes. So sad. I know something for you. I was very blown away, Marty. I was blown away. Yes, I know something for you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but guys, so I do that every um, every Tuesday, Saturday, and you can go on my page as well, Peter uh, N. Middle Initial and Trias Sopo. I'm on there, and you can watch that as well. It's very, you know, Kamaka. I, I tell you, if God, I would know, man, if it's about me. But man, God moves me. Every session is different, cuz. Every session, every meeting, and every response, everybody on there, they're like, my God, my God, it's really, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just say, man, glory to God. He, uh, you know, that he would use a, a non a coolie bum like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, I've kept the um, Nisili. Um, the prayer chain site up um, encourage everyone to uh, go to that site I, I I looked at it for the first time last evening and it was so compelling the video on there is so compelling everyone needs to needs really to go to it uh, it was really beautiful and touched my heart and I wanted to make sure that uh, we encourage all of our friends all of our Ohana Peter to go to the site um, and do whatever we can, um, you know, um, for that as well. Excellent. Um, yeah, let me see. Go. We, we've got quite a few of the comments coming. I think we've covered those uh, um, uh, that just now. And so um, the um, <clears throat> the last couple the last couple of minutes of our time together here, I just like to um, um, have you share with us um, your, you know, what is it. Do you think families, Peter, can do? Um, you know, we live we live in a time of a digital age. Uh, there's so many things that are that are pulling the attention of our young people uh, in so many directions. <clears throat> um, your thoughts on what parents can do? What you know, just to define what we can do um, to really help protect our our keiki, to protect our children. Is anything you think that that um, we could do more um, for our families and for our children when you think about it? It's a very, very, very good question, brother. So in terms of, especially in this new norm that we have, yeah, I think parenting has to elevate. Parenting has to rise above the old way of parenting. We got to cover our kids a lot more. We got to love a lot more. This pandemic, you know, the thing is, the beauty of the pandemic, Marco, is it's kind of locked you in your own house with your own family. So I think God, again, I believe, yes, God, God, the only reason this pandemic is going on is God allows it to. 
So to God, it's a blessing, right? To us, it's the opportunity of checking ourselves, rededicating our lives. You know what I mean? And then being quarantined, you're now with your kids, the really ones you love. Husbands, wives, children, you're in that box. So if anything, you got to rededicate yourselves to each other. We got to be prudent parents. Prudent parents, guys. The prudent parent is what I'm talking about is you're not looking to just take care of the kid for today and tomorrow, this week. You're looking at down the road, guys. You're knowing, man, one day I'm going to be gone. But can my kid last in this world? And this world is vicious. This world will take you down. You know what I mean? You know, God tells me, I heard a, an evangelist say years ago, we're, we're not survivalists, right? We're not here to survive. We're revivalists. We're revivalists. All right, guys? So when you're a question, Kamaka, you got to rededicate and revive your own family. As parents, as parents, you got to cover and protect your family and do everything in your power to make it good, to make it right. You know, and that that that's a tall order, but there has to be a start. There has to be a beginning. So if anything, guys, in this time of quarantine, all of us, we're trying to play it safe. Myself, my wife, man, she's like the dang quarantine police. <laughs> she, I get home from my workouts, from going to the, the track and doing my cardio. I get home, she almost makes me take off all my clothes and burn them. Mm. But anyway, it's very important, guys. And, and on that as well, it's a great question, Kamaka. And I tell guys, man, live in love, bigger and better every day, guys. Yeah. Forget the unforgiveness. Forget the bitterness, forget the hate. If it doesn't serve your family now, forget about it. Forget about it. Renew, renew your relationships. Open your eyes, see what's going on because you don't know what's going to happen. Remember, Kamaka, a short year ago, everything was gold. Everything was normal. A short year. Here now, we're going on a year of wow. Quarantine, pandemic. You know what I mean? a very unprecedented time globally, not just in Hawaii or California or in the US, globally. Yeah. So this thing is serious, guys, but I love the question, Kamaka, because it's gotta be with love. It's gotta be with love. I love the Hawaii, the law spirit, that's love. The Bible says God is love, guys. So if God is love, everything you do with love, you do with love. God. Everything you do in love, you do it in God. So love is the answer, guys. Solid. And that love, remember, that love doesn't, it's not real love. Love cannot love itself. Amen? Right. Love cannot love itself. Love has to be executed. Love has to be given. Love has to be given to the other. Jesus Christ died for us. That was love the most greatest love of all. For you, you got to make love. You got to give it. You can't just hold it. Love don't love itself. Love is because I love you, Kamaka, and you love me. Gotcha. Love is because you love Kay, Kamaka, and Kay loves you. That's what makes love, love. So for everybody, the answer to your question in one word, Kamaka, is love. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> well, we come near to the close of our time together, Peter. I just love it. I, I'm going to hit you with, I'm going to hit you with, I call it the fast, the rapid. fast three, the fast three, the rapid three. You ready? Rapid three, rapid three. Number one, number one. Okay. Favorite food right now. Favorite food. Uh, poke. Poke. Ooh. Number two, favorite place to visit. Hawaii. Hawaii. And number three, what is your favorite role? My very first, and now the film is, is, is classic, Necessary Roughness, Manu Mana. <laughs> Manu Mana. <laughs> that is classic, indeed. It's classic, classic, classic. Wow, what fun. Woo, man, we, we still have friends coming up over here. Um, and um, yeah, we... we, we um, uh, definitely prayers some um, for um uh, the um, so for you yeah, yeah for for the family as well yeah um two and um 
Let me see. Yeah, Fly Flying Hawaiian says we all need prayer. Absolutely, and um, spending as much time as we can on prayer. And uh, oh, um, you know our friends from from Reason. He says, email us reasoneyewear at gmail .com. Mention this interview with Peter, and we'll provide a big discount. He capitalized B I G over there. So wow. this, is, this is a notorious B.I.G. Whoa, he's putting that on now. Whoa, now, whoa. <laughs> now, now, I got I to gotta share, you know, that I do have a pair of, um, uh, but they're not as cool as yours, though. You know, this is the OG oh, look, no. right? Yeah, this is. This no, is, huh? you were, you rock that, brother. You <laughs> rock that. Remember, Kamaka, you got normal kind head. Yeah. This is for all the big, this is for big head. This is a handicap glasses. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Hey, hey, big head, big, big head, small brain. Big head, small brain like me and Marty. But huge heart, huge heart. Big heart. Big, big heart. heart. With love, with love. So, so our friends, uh, Make a notation over there, reasoneyewear at gmail.com. Mention that you saw the interview with Peter, and uh, they will respond uh, with either a, a code or, uh, you know, to provide you a discount for anything you purchase off of um, the uh, Reason Scene Co. Um, uh, ordering page, you know, on, on their internet site, their, their web page as well. Oh, my goodness. This, is, this has been fun. Thank you. Mahalo, Peter. This is so beautiful that you came and visit with us. Um, pleasure. My heart is full. My, my heart is full. You know. My pleasure, brother. Uh, Thank you. Come on. It, was, it was an honor and a privilege, brother. Um, but I still feel that you really did something bad by, you know, <laughs> holding back the malasadas, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I cannot get over that. Okay. Um, I know. I have to get over it like a bridge. Get over it like the Alawai Bridge. Get over the bridge by Makali. I know. But. Um, uh, and then when I mentioned that, you know, I, I was looking for something about Zippies, you had to mention you went over to Rainbow Drive-In. Now, that was, you know, bro. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Well, my, favorite, my favorite restaurant here, Kamaga. Uh, my favorite restaurant in Hawaii, Foodland. Uh, food <laughs> Foodland Poke, the Poke Bar. The poke bar. They got the best poke bar. Oh, my goodness. You know, uh, Flying Hawaiian says, thank you for sharing your aloha with us on Aloha Friday. All the way from uh, Denver, Colorado. Mahalo for uh, uh, going along on the ride with us. Uh, and Peter, God bless you. Um, I'm, I know you and I will be talking more soon. Um, uh, and uh, it, maybe even working on other projects because uh, Brother Don uh, Kaokai says, hey, we in it for the ride, man. I said, let's do this. Let's do this over here. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, and if, uh, Pula Leo says, yes, Foodland has the best poke. <laughs> you mentioned that. I need, I need to get some residuals for Foodland for this. <laughs> I think so, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Peter, um, all the best on Magnum PI. We will do our part over here to, uh, to um, get, um, get the fires burning. Uh, mahalo Thank to you. Cinco. Um, uh, they are beautiful. Reason Cinco, uh, Danka Aokai, and his Ohana. Uh, and um, on behalf of uh, Sandwich Island Social Network, mahalo for tuning in and checking us out. We will be back again where Aloha happens right here on the Sandwich Island Social Network. Mahalo, Rapita. Take care. We'll talk to you love soon. Love you guys. I love you. Goodbye.